Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake and Planet Zoo, a project where we're aiming to build this really large wildlife park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode we are going to be introducing some animals relatively local to the area with some American bison and some pronghorn antelope. If that does sound good to you and if you do like today's episode, please do consider leaving a like on the episode and of course do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. With that intro out of the way, let's talk about what it is we're doing today. And before we get into it a bit more, let me just say, you know how I've mentioned in previous episodes that I really uh, focused on making sure every part of the zoo was built on a 15 degree angle, all the paths, all the barriers. Yeah, I found a part of the zoo which isn't. This little area right here that you're seeing on screen somehow is not on a 15 degree angle. And it is not on that angle by such a tiny amount, which somehow makes it even worse. And I'm just like, oh god, that is frustrating. <laughs> I did end up fixing it a little bit, just using the the um, viewing area to kind of trick it a little bit. But oh my gosh, seeing that path. And it's right at the start though, like that must be one of my first builds too, because it's right by the auto habitat. So I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Anyways, besides that, today of course we are taking a little bit of a break from the North American Animal Pack, but we're still going to be including North American animals. So, we are using this big area here, which is an area I've wanted to work on for, well basically since the start of the park, but just never had an idea for what to do here. And then I decided, you know what, this would fit a herd of pronghorn and bison really well, because it's kind of like a big open area, the hill itself is not too steep um, a slope. So I smoothed it out quite a bit, added in a lot of like slightly more flattened areas as well. You know, so that the animals can have places to rest and not always be on a slope. And I think it works really well for the animals. And the plenty of viewing areas as well, as you walk up the stairs or if you take the lift as well, there's great views of the area, uh, of the entire habitat. There's a viewing area at the top and along the sides at the bottom as well. But there's plenty of areas where the animals can get away from the sight lines of people so that they cannot be seen. And there's a nice little shelter at the bottom as well, which we re um, we used a version of the one that we used for... Was it the uh, sable antelope in the African section? So we just repurposed one of those kind of shelters. And I think at the end this turns out to be quite a nice habitat. Very simple, nothing too fancy, but I think it looks really nice. Fills in the area quite well. Um, one thing I do miss now is that there was a nice big empty area here for, uh, which gave um, gave the guests a bit of a break I guess from looking at all these different habitats and now that's kind of gone so I might try and find another way to incorporate a, an empty natural space because the zoo is really densely packed at the moment and I would really like to have some more just quiet empty spaces of just nature, no animals, no people so I'll try and find a way to incorporate a bit of that as we go forward but yeah, right now the zoo is just incredibly dense, so that's a bit of a shame, um, but I think we'll be able to work with it just fine. Anyways, while we're building the habitat, and like I said, it's a pretty simple build, so let's talk a bit about the, the animals, because we are including two species today, pronghorns and American bison. Pronghorns are, of course, commonly known as pronghorn antelopes, but they are not actually antelopes. They fill a similar niche in North America, but they are actually most closely related to giraffes and okapi, which is just crazy. They don't look anything like them, of course, but they are quite closely related to them. And because of that, um, their antlers are not exactly antlers, they're horns. Um, of course, that's all just like um, due to the fact that they're not deer, you know. They, I guess antlers, horns is somewhat interchangeable, but Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about that because I'm not an expert on mammals and I'm probably just going to be like completely butchering the um, the anatomy when it comes to stuff like that. But uh, as far as I can tell, the ones that are on pronghorns are called horns. And um, they are quite beautiful, honestly. I think they're really, really gorgeous. They are kind of flattened and then they splay out into two separate um, like sections that point outwards and only the males have them. But when you look at them from a profile view, they're just, it, they're so unique. You can definitely not mistake them for any other, like, animal of a similar size or shape. Like, you would not mistake them for a deer because of those. And they're also incredibly fast animals. Like, incredibly fast. They get up to 90 kilometers an hour, which is just absolutely mind-boggling how an animal can run that fast. 
they also thankfully uh, least concern in the IUCN, which means not endangered, thankfully, which is really cool. Um, people theorize they actually evolved their ability to run really fast to escape from uh, ancient predators they would have had, like the American cheetah, which is now extinct. So that's quite cool, because of course now there's no American predator that can actually run anywhere near as fast as a pronghorn. So this might be kind of like a, a leftover structure that was developed for something else, but now it doesn't really need to run as fast, but it's still beneficial to run that fast, so it's not going to get like selected against, if that makes sense. So I, I think that's quite too, uh, quite interesting, really. Um, besides the pronghorn, we're also introducing the American bison to the habitat. And they're, of course, something I wanted to introduce since the start of the park. Same with the pronghorns. I just wanted a lot of North American animals. And I'm glad we're finally getting to introduce them. These are the largest terrestrial mammals in uh, North America. They're heavy and they are long and they're just really titanic animals. Like, their heads alone are so big and it's just... Like, I've seen pic uh, pictures of people standing next to them and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> that's a big animal. They, of course, have very close relationships um, with Native American peoples and even just um, even like settlers. So when they came over and stuff, maybe not as good relationships because they have quite a tragic story. Of course, the American bison um, in the 19th century, they were hunted so voraciously by um, like essentially um, the settlers and stuff that the species was driven from something like 60 million all the way down to 500 animals. And that is just one of the most tragic stories in all of like animal um, history, I think. It's just like, wow, the, the, just the scale of that is, is absolutely mind boggling and it's, it's just really sad. But thankfully, in the 20th century or so, there's been a real big like resurgence in their population. They've come back up in numbers to about 30,000. Of course, nowhere near the millions they used to be, but getting there and they've even been reintroduced to uh, loads of different areas, even up to Russia. And they are getting back to a healthy number of animals and they're considered only near threatened now instead of endangered, which is really, really good and really like promising for the species. Of course, um, they're still quite uh, relegated in national parks and stuff, but hopefully as the numbers increase, they'll get, you know, a, a stronger foothold in the in the um, North American plains. Um, yeah, also one funny, uh, funny thing about these guys is they're one of those animals that uh, their scientific name is just a repetition of their name. So the plains bison is bison, bison, bison. That is a scientific name, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, come on, guys, you could have been a little bit more, you know, like, could be a little more creative, you know? <laughs> but um, I thought that was quite funny. I always find them funny. Like, I think the scientific name for iguana is iguana, iguana, and the Western lowland gorilla is gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. So those ones I find quite funny. Bison have actually been around in North America for like 5 million years or something like that. So they would have, like, coexisted with all sorts of other animals, like, Things like Mastodon, maybe, uh, Mammoths, you know, like, I'm not 100% sure, of course, but then you have, like, the extinct big cats that would have lived in North America and stuff like that. So it's just really cool that these guys, the bison, have stayed around to this day. It's um, just super, super interesting, I think. But yeah, they're, they're fascinating animals, both of these, and I'm really glad to finally have them in the park. I think they've got quite a nice habitat here that's given them a decent amount of space and a good like kind of area to explore with areas to get away from the guests as well if they need to. Here I'm building kind of like a makeshift staff area. It's not gonna look very nice, but I think there's gonna be a few of these sorts of buildings around the park in no matter where, what sort of park it is. It's just like buildings that kind of have to fit a certain purpose and were built relatively quickly and um, maybe a bit more haphazardly, just so that, you know, they're, they're very much for practical purposes and they're for the most part out of the uh, view of the guests. So I think it works out pretty well. Uh, I'm down here, I'm also um, adding in some enrichment items and just lots of rock work to make sure there's a lot of flat areas and to cover up some of the edges of like the mud pit and stuff like that. I do love it when an animal needs a mud pit. In this case, it's the bison because they look very cute when they're wallowing in it. I don't know if I got that um, for the cinematics, but they do look super cute when they're wallowing in there. 
You can see I've put down the shelter at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it, might go back and change it. Same actually, like I said about this staff area, even though it is quite haphazard and it's meant to look like that, I might change it just because I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of how it looks. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, it looks a bit weird in my head, so I might I might just change it anyways. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, this park is by no means uh, finished yet. We are getting there, but there's plenty of things which I would be happy to go back and, and revise as we go forward. So yeah, as you can see, it has just quite a very simplistic roof. And yeah, looking back on it now, I'm not a big fan of it. So I probably will go back and change it. I'm just putting in some final walls here to make sure the bison don't like essentially fall over the side of a cliff at any given point and putting in a lot of uh, bushes here as well in a second because that'll just really help with the kind of the um I don't know hiding the the infrastructure a little bit and making it look like this is really dense foliage and stuff that these large animals just wouldn't go in anyway so it'll be like an extra deterrent from them to get anywhere that wouldn't necessarily be safe for them. But yeah, we're coming up to the end of the episode now. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Bison and Pronghorn. I definitely did. One of the great things, I think, about zoo games and stuff is that I just always learn new things. Like like I said, I, I never knew what Pronghorns even were until I played Planet Zoo, and now I do. So I, it's just a great like thing, I think, to learn about this. Oh yeah, I completely forgot. Now I'm adding foliage. These look to the Drin grass, which is, of course, an African grass, but I think it works really well as a substitute for like long grass to kind of emulate the... The kind of the feel of being in the plains and stuff of North America. And I think it looks quite nice. Um, I might go back and again touch up these areas a little bit more off screen. But for now I think it looks really good. And yeah, um, as far as the, the park goes. I think next episode we might do a cougar habitat. Um, I think I found a place for it near where the snow leopards are. And then a uh, prairie dog habitat. I could have put the prairie dogs in here, but the only thing is it's such a big habitat. No one would actually be able to see the prairie dogs because I think right now they're the smallest habitat animal in the game. So yeah, we'll make a habitat for them somewhere else in the park. Anyways, uh, I'd like to say thanks so much for watching. Thanks as always for the support on the channel. Um, if you did like the video, do like it. Do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. Again, as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!